thank you to everyone. Um, I appreciate you being here today. Um, this is a beautiful venue that we have for our conference here at this hotel in Alpharetta. Uh, many, many years ago, I actually used to live in Alpharetta. And as a trivia point, I used to live in Alpharetta when Georgia 400 was two lanes. Not two lanes on either side, but two lanes total. It was before Mobile came in and bought all the land to create Windward Parkway. It was before Old Milton Parkway was called Old Milton. It was before Windward Parkway was actually called Windward Parkway. And um, eventually, over the 17 years that I lived out there, everybody figured out how beautiful it was out here and moved out here, and all of a sudden, traffic just sucked. So now I live in Virginia Highlands. So, um, but wanted to start off to give you some information about myself. I'm going to start off with the traditional three truths and one lie. Three of these items that I've listed in here about myself are true. One is not true. At the end of my speech, I will let you guess which one is not true. So the four items. In number one, I graduated from university before the IBM PC was introduced. Number two, I have visited 82 countries. Number three, I clerk for Sandra Day O'Connor. And number four, my home is 400 square feet. So I'll let you chew on that for a while, and at the end of my presentation, I'll let you guess which one is not true. So today, what I'm going to talk about is Webpack. Originally, when I planned my speech, I assumed I would be speaking for an hour, which is kind of what we need in order to give you an introduction to Webpack, its functionality, how to use it, and what benefit it brings to you within your application. Then I was told that I was only going to be speaking for 20 minutes. So I'm going to, as quickly as I can, give you a quick overview of Webpack in the 20 minutes that I have. But at the end of my speech, after I let you guess which one of those things is not true, I'm going to give you information on how you can get more detailed information about Webpack that I've put together. So, but today, in 20 minutes, I'm going to talk about what is Webpack, how to install it, and then four basic concepts that you need to know in order to be able to use Webpack, and that is the entry, the output, loaders, and plugins. So, to get started, what is Webpack? How many of you are actually using Webpack in your applications today? So, quite a few of you. How many of you find it very easy to understand and use and configure Webpack? Okay, nobody raised their hands. Excellent. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, what is Webpack? Webpack is the leading module bundler for JavaScript applications. Um, it manages every asset that you have in your application. And when I talk about every asset, it's not just JavaScript files or your CSS files. It handles everything. If you have images, it'll handle that. If you have fonts, it will handle that also for you. It will handle everything for you. And the way that it works is it actually goes through and it converts every one of those assets in your application into a module. And then it will take that module and modify it so that it can be used within the browser. And that's how Webpack works. So here is a diagram. It's a little bit of a busy diagram, and it shows you just what, some of the, of the functionality that Webpack provides. This gives you a list of a sample application that has quite a few JavaScript files inside that application. It's going to go through and take every single one of those JavaScript files, run it through Webpack, and it's going to actually create a bundle file as a result of taking all those files, modifying them, and then creating them into a bundle. Now, this slide is an example of how it would handle JavaScript files. You could substitute in here CSS files, you could substitute images, you could substitute font, you could substitute vendor files that you pull in that you actually install in your application. Everything that you use, Webpack can actually go through and manage for you. So the very basics of how do I get in, um, Webpack installed? 
very simple. It's an NPM command that you basically just install it from your console um, to put it directly into your application. So you would run this command from the root directory of your application. Now, it's possible to actually install Webpack globally instead of installing it within your application itself. I don't recommend doing that because what would happen if you installed it globally, it locks you to a specific version of Webpack across all of your applications. And sometimes that might fail in production um, in projects that might need a different version of Webpack. So um, this is how you would go through and actually install it. Once you have it installed, the question is, how do you actually run it? If you installed it locally within your application, you can actually run it from the command line by giving it um, the direct path to the Webpack executable, which is going to be in the, um, your node modules folder. That's one way that you can run it, by just running it directly from the command line. One of the ways that most people run it is through NPM scripts. And so the bottom image that we have here is basically an, an, an NPM script called build that will allow you to go out and run Webpack. In the script, you don't actually have to give it a path all the way to the node modules to the Webpack executable. Since it's an NPM script, NPM knows that it's looking for something inside the node modules, and it will just execute it for you correctly. So if you wanted to run that script from the terminal, you would just put in NPM run build, and build, of course, is just the name of the script that I have listed here. Next, once you have NPM, I mean, Webpack installed, and you know how to actually run it, the next step is actually how to configure it. And this is a point that most people ch um, struggle in using Webpack because sometimes the documentation isn't very clear. You're not sure what you're supposed to be doing in order to configure your application to get the output for that bundle that you need. So in order to configure Webpack, you have a very simple um, Webpack configuration file. And this file is called webpack.config.js. And that file is found in the root directory of your application. So you can easily just create the file. It's a simple JavaScript file. And the way that it works is that it has a configuration object found inside that webpack.config.js file. And this file is exported using just your simple node module exports. And here in the slide is a picture of what that format of that export would look like. In your configuration file, there are basically four basic core concepts that you need to know how to use in order to configure Webpack for your particular application. Those four basic concepts are entry, output, loaders, and plugins. And so I'm going to briefly talk about each one of those four and explain how they are used and give you very basic examples of each one of those four concepts. How you put in the configuration file for each one of these four core concepts determines how Webpack will actually manage your application. So the very first one we have is the entry point. In your Webpack config file, you would put in the name of the file that is the starting point for your application. So if you've ever done like a node application or if you've ever used Express or any, done any um, type of uh, node exports, you know that you always have one file that your application starts with that file can actually go out and require other files. And then those files can require their own files that they need to have access to their code and whatnot. So what Webpack does is by specifying your entry, it knows where to start for your application. And then it goes through and builds out everything that it needs into what's called its dependency graph. And what you specify here for your entry is a direct and as an absolute path to that file 
that starts your application. Now that you've got your entry points configured, the next thing you need to have is your output. Because what Webpack is going to do is going to take all the assets in your application. It's going to probably apply some type of transformation to those files and then output them into a bundle. The output in the config file tells it where it's going to put that bundle that it's going to create for you. In a very simple terms, your output is an object, and it has one simple um, key in there that's called file name. And it's what's going to be the name of the bundle that it's going to be, be creating. In this example, I have it where it's creating a file that's called bundle.js. That bundle.js file is actually going to be created in the root directory of your application. Now, in very large applications, you don't want it to actually be in your root directory. So you might want to put it in a, um, a distribution folder, or, you know, a DST folder, or a build folder, or a public folder, or something other than in your root directory. There are options that you can put in for the output to tell it the path to where that file is going to be created. If you don't put in a path, it's going to default into the root directory of your application itself. The next core concept that you need to understand are loaders. This is where you actually have to understand what is Webpack doing to understand exactly what functionality loaders are going to provide to you. As I mentioned earlier, Webpack is going to manage every single asset in your application. And it's going to do some type of transformation to them and create a bundle file for you to use. What a loader does is a loader will actually take certain files that you specify and it will run it through a loader, make some transformation to it, and then send back the modified file to you for it to be able to use. So here is an example of adding loaders into your webpack.config.js file. The way that you add loaders is that you have a module object that you put in, and that module object is an array of rule sets. So these are rules that you're going to apply to every asset within your application. Each one of those rule sets basically has a combination of two things associated with it. The first thing associated with it is the test, and then the other one is use. What the test tells you is these is basically nothing more than a regex expression. So is everybody familiar with regex? It basically will tell you using this regex expression. So the regex expression in this demo is saying, I want every file that ends in .js. So um, the dollar sign at the end means ends, ends with .js. So in your application, every file that ends with .js is going to be run through the loader. And in this case, the loader is Babel Loader. And what Babel Loader does is it will take all of your um, JavaScript files that are written in ES6, and it will compile it down into a version of JavaScript that will be supported in all the different browsers that are out there. So the next thing that we need to learn from a core concepts is what's called a plugin. So you might want to ask, like, what's the difference between a plugin and a, and a loader? Well, a plugin is kind of like the backbone of Webpack. A plugin can do everything a loader can do plus more. So let's look at the comparison between a plugin and a loader. A loader can only work and transform a single file before it inserts it into Webpack's dependency graph. A plugin basically can basically change multiple files for you within your application. If you want to do something other than transform a single file, for example, if you want to minify your code, if you want to bundle your code, you need to be able to use a plugin 
to be able to accomplish that. And then in your configuration file, this is what you would put in in order to look at for your plugins. So a, you have a plugin object, um, and I have an example of two plugins that I'm showing in this demonstration. Webpack by default, out of the box, by installing Webpack into your application, has a series of plugins available with it that comes with plug, um, within Webpack itself. There is also a healthy universe of third-party plugins that have been written to work with Webpack. So in these two examples, I've given you um, an example of using a built-in Webpack plugin as well as a third-party plugin. At the very top of the, the, this example is where I actually require the HTML Webpack plugin, and that is a third-party plugin. So in order for me to acquire it, I had to at first NPM install that into my application so I can have access to it. And then I actually set up a Webpack variable where I require Webpack that I have installed. In my plugins, the very first example shows me using the built-in Webpack plugin to go through and uglify my JavaScript code. The second one is an example of using the third-party plugin, and so it uses um, HTML Webpack plugin, which is the name of the variable that I assigned it to when I required it at the very top of the file. And then I just happen to pass in a configuration into that particular third-party plugin so that I can have access to it. Unlike loaders, when you're using a plugin, you have to, to instantiate it with, as a new instance by using the new command on there. Um, so it makes it a little bit simpler to use. Now, going back to the very beginning of my thing, I gave you three truths and one lie about myself. So the moment of truth, let's see how many, how many of you think A is not true? Okay, how many of you think B is not true? Okay. How many of you think C is not true? How many of you think D is not true? Very good. If you guess C, that's not true. All the other three about my, myself are true. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, I had planned on speaking for an hour. I hadn't planned on speaking for 20 minutes, and I had enough information to pack into an hour, and I ended up having to condense it for today, and I gave you a, just a high overview. You might want to write this website down, because what I did was I took all of my material that I had planned on speaking on for an hour, and I created a website this past weekend that's called n5days.tech, and I called it that simply because I took all of my material that gives you more in-depth information about Webpack, more details, and I put it into an email training course that's for five days. So you go to the website, put in your email address, you will get like a thousand word long email describing Webpack. And then for the next four days in a row, so five days total, you will get a follow-up email that gives you more detail about Webpack. On that website, I have two training courses available right now on tooling. The first one is on Webpack. The other one is on using NPM as a build script. So it talks about using NPM for build scripts so you don't have to use Grunt or Gulp to be able to do that. And if you're interested in getting in touch with me, um, here is my information. My personal website is appropriately named jenniferbland.com. Um, my GitHub account is ratracegrad. My email address is ratracegrad at gmail.com. And my Twitter account is ratracegrad. If you notice a little bit of a consistency in there, um, ratracegrad is, is kind of my um, image that I have on the internet. So if you see that, that's me that's out there. Um, so hopefully, this gives you a, a quick overview of Webpack. If you want more details, please go to my n5days.tech and get more details information on it. And I appreciate it. Thank you so very much for being here today.